Ray at Glencoe. I'm on my way, but you'll understand why I might be a little bit late. The view is absolutely stunning. <laughs> So I've been to this beach three or four times and there's been nothing happening, uh, no light, uh, no waves, uh, nothing. I've decided to pop back as I was coming over towards uh, Glencoe and it's just a completely different place. Uh, 70 to 200 lens on the front, what I'm trying to do is capture uh, the power of these waves and also the rocks and also the beauty that is the mountains behind. Difficult one uh, to expose for because we've got a really bright sea and dark background. So I'm using the sea as my exposure. And uh, if we go two stops over exposed for the sea, we should get a balanced exposure. And that's showing me F-16. I'm shooting F-16 because I want a uh, good depth of field in this shot. Uh, I'm not expecting the actual rocks at the front to be pin sharp. I'm not really interested. I'm more interested in the uh, uh, shot itself being a nicely exposed shot. And we're going sharp uh, on the promontory at the end, the rocks at the end. And then it's just a case of Taking the shot. Shot looks nice. Shot looks nice. And what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to go down onto the water's edge and get a breaker shot. Uh, but I'm not going to take you with me. I'm going to show them both together. So the first shot is going to be this one, and the second shot is going to be that breaker shot at the front. What a difference uh, a day makes. Yesterday it was howling a gale, it was freezing cold, it was wet, it was torrential. And now I've got this big padded jacket on, which was absolutely ringing wet. I was actually uh, ringing it and the water was coming out uh, um, in buckets. It was drenched. It was as if I'd just thrown it in the lock, it was that wet. And today it's dried off. But we're here uh, next to this lock and the sun's beating down and it is incredibly warm. I'd say it's about 24 degrees. It's just absolutely beautiful with that sun. Oh, and the midges are biting, flying teeth are out. Now, I've been told that these Scottish flying teeth are the worst flying teeth ever in the UK. Uh, unless these are all blokes, because somebody told me that the only flying teeth that bite you are the girls. Unless these are all blokes, well, they're warm, wimps. They're what's is these teeth? They're not biting me at all. Just flying around and having a good time. The ones at uh, Lady Bow are ten times worse. And the ones at the Lake District. These, these are, these are not flying teeth. These are flying gums. These. So I'm on, still on the way to Glencoe, going the wrong way. The reason I've stopped is that view. What we've got is we've got a lock with 
tree infested island and it's those awesome trees that look like something out of Lord of the Rings, silver and white and gold. And then we've got the mountain view in the background. I've taken this shot already and I haven't taken you down with me because I didn't know whether the shot was gonna work. And I was very lucky that when I got the shot, the water wasn't as it is now. Can you see how it's rippled? So I've got no reflection of the trees. So when I took the image, we had those reflections. However, they weren't perfect. Uh, if you can get here on a really still day with the light right, and you can get this shot, then uh, you're gonna be a happy bunny. This is the image coming up now, but if you want to know where I am, I'm on the road to Loch Inver from Ullapool, and you need to look out for the graveyard or a little burial uh, ground on the left-hand side. pulled up uh, and I've just gone back to the van to get a new battery for the microphone because as is always the case you get to the place where you're going to shoot and something dies but that's for another day we are on the shores of Loch Assin and it's still teeming it down with rain but what are you going to expect from the wonderful highlands of Scotland in November or the very end of October. So the reason I've stopped and the reason I brought you out in this horrible weather, <laughs> this run-of-the-mill landscape photographer, follow me photographer, has got you out in some horrendous conditions. Uh, what we're shooting is these little islands and um, I'll show you what it looks like in camera now. It almost looks monochrome because we've got that much flat light and really what we're emphasising is just the shadows of these trees. This shot reminds me of, it's either Platoon or Apocalypse Now, it's one of those two films and there, there are shots where there's just trees sticking up uh, and they've all been bombed to bits uh, and uh, one of the trees in this shot looks a bit like a palm tree and that's what attracted me to the shot. I do get a few comments to say, well, do you not put your camera in a plastic bag? No, I don't. It's weatherproof. As Forrest Gump says, I'll give you a wipe. You might have been a bit soft. As Forrest Gump says, that's all I have to say about that. Now, I'm sure you guys are getting quite cold sat there watching me out here. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the lens one more time. And I'm going to take the shot. Timer. F8. Six of a second. Shots in the bag.
it's half past five in the morning and I'm, I'm at the Red Squirrel car park in Enco. And I met up last night with Ray Smith and his pal John, who's now my pal. Um, and both Ray and John know Enco like the back of the hand. So they're going to take me around and show me a couple of the sites this morning. Unfortunately, I've got to get off at lunchtime uh, to get back to the family, but hopefully, hopefully, we should find something nice. So where are we? We're in Glencoe. Yeah. Land of the McDonald's. <laughs> there you go. You can see why they all left. <laughs> <laughs> you can see uh, that we're in uh, Glencoe, as John said. This is John, uh, this is Ray. Uh, these guys are aficionados of Glencoe, oh. taking some awesome images. Uh, so they've come up uh, to give me a guided tour. It's going to be quite a short tour because I've got to nip off at lunch, but we are at the famous White Bothy. Lag and Garb. There you go. I'm glad he said that, not me. <laughs> Lag and Garb. And we're after a moody shot, most probably be black and white. It's a few minutes before sunrise and we're just waiting for that sun, or the light anyway, uh, to do its magic. Whether or not it does or not, we'll see. So you can see John here just setting up that classic uh, shot of the body uh, with his 24 to 70. This is a 24 to 70, isn't it, John? Yeah, on the on the 20. He's at 24 mil, um, and he's shooting with the Canon 5D Mark III, isn't it, John? And he's organised, you see, because he's got a brolly, and I have got. <laughs> he can't sing, but he's organised with his brolly. <laughs> Shouldn't say that to an ex-para. <laughs> uh, sunrise has been and gone. Uh, Going to be a moody black and white shot, I think. We'll see. I've got the 24 to 70 on the front, 0.9 ND grad on the front as well, just to darken the skies down a little bit. I've just been watching how John set his uh, composition up. And he's actually got two ND grads, a hard grad and a soft grad. Uh, and what it does is it makes that sky really, really moody. Uh, you can do that in post-production, but it looks awesome in camera, especially because he's set up in monochrome as well, and it looks brilliant. Um, but 24 to 70 on the front, and all I've done is taken uh, a pano shot from right to left just to get uh, everything in shot. Uh, and that gives me a little bit more leeway in post if I want to crop in. But I've also taken some shots directly of the body itself, single shots in this portrait mode as well. It's moody, it's black and white. Absolutely. So that's it from this location, we're packing up uh, the weather's closing in. We've got shots, um, from my point of view, award-winning, no, uh, but had an absolutely brilliant time with John and with Ray. And we're hoping that uh, come the next month or two, we're gonna get together maybe for a couple of days, do some proper videos, and these guys will show me around. And then that'll introduce you even more to uh, Ray's channel. And hopefully, uh, John will have his set up and he'll be vlogging and we can introduce his channel at that time as well. Awesome, jobs are good. And now, we're going for some breakfast at the Glencoe Ski Lodge. Yes, cornflakes. Cornflakes for them. For me, you know what it's gonna be. Bacon butty and a cup of tea, and maybe an egg. Yeah. And they'll know whether or not I have tomato sauce or red sauce, but they're not selling. 